Welcome to this fourth and final video presentation on equilibrium principles. In the previous video, we learned about the effect of changing concentration on an equilibrium reaction. In this video, we will finish off the variables by examining the effect of changing temperature and pressure. In both of these, we will look at both an increase and decrease on this factor. We will also look at what using a catalyst does to an equilibrium system. Let's start with temperature. When we increase the temperature of a system, we increase the average kinetic energy of all the particles involved. This then means there is an overall increase in the energy of the system. So in order to reverse this change and minimise the effect of this increase in energy, the equilibrium will have to shift in the direction that absorbs energy, which of course will be in the direction of the endothermic reaction. Let's use an example to illustrate this. In this reaction, the hydrogen and iodine gases are in equilibrium with hydrogen iodide. Hydrogen and hydrogen iodide are colourless gases and iodine is purple. So an equilibrium mixture will have a purple colour overall. A bit like this. The forward direction of this reaction is exothermic, seen here by the negative enthalpy change. So an increase in temperature on this reaction vessel will cause the equilibrium to shift in the endothermic direction to absorb this additional energy. So in this particular reaction, the equilibrium will shift in the direction of the back or reverse reaction because that is the direction which is endothermic. This will result in more reactants being made, in other words, more hydrogen and iodine gases. As iodine has a purple colour, heating the reaction vessel, by using a hot water bath for example, will result in the reaction vessel becoming a darker purple colour, or more intense, as the concentration of the purple iodine is increased. Now there is one more effect of increasing temperature to consider. Since the amount of reactants is increased in this reaction, there will be an overall decrease in the ratio of products to reactants. In other words, the value of the equilibrium constant K will decrease. Remember, increasing the denominator of a fraction will cause the value of K in this case to become smaller because dividing by a bigger number makes the overall answer a smaller value. So increasing the temperature of an exothermic reaction will decrease the value of the equilibrium constant. This can be seen with the changes in this equilibrium. Increasing the temperature from 298 Kelvin to 700 Kelvin overall decreases the value of the equilibrium constant. This shows that the concentration of reactants has increased. The equilibrium constant changes with the temperature, so the temperature therefore must be quoted with the value of K. Next we will consider decreasing the temperature of the system, which of course decreases the kinetic energy of the system and overall there is a loss of energy. In order to reverse this change and minimise the effect of the decreased temperature or the energy loss, the equilibrium will shift in the direction that releases energy which of course will be the exothermic direction this time. So looking at the hydrogen iodide reaction again, the forward direction of this reaction is exothermic, given by the negative enthalpy change. So decreasing the temperature of the equilibrium reaction will shift the reaction in the exothermic direction, which in this case is the forward reaction. Therefore, it will result in an overall increase in the concentration of products. So in this case, as the concentration of the purple iodine, the reactants, is being reduced, cooling the reaction vessel will result in the intensity of the purple colour fading. But note, the vessel will not become colourless, as this mixture is still in equilibrium, which means you must have reactants and products present. You cannot remove all of the purple iodine simply by cooling the vessel. It will still be purple, just a lighter shade. 
How does a decrease in the temperature affect the value of the equilibrium constant K? Decreasing the temperature of an exothermic reaction causes more products to be made. This will increase the ratio of products to reactants. Making the numerator of this ratio a large number will of course cause the value of K to become larger. There will be an overall increase of K. Decreasing the temperature of an exothermic reaction will increase the value of the equilibrium constant. So lowering the temperature from 700 Kelvin to 298 Kelvin causes the equilibrium constant to increase from 54 to 794. This shows that more products are being made at a lower temperature, so the forward reaction must be exothermic. So let's summarise the temperature effects. You should pause the video at this point and copy these points out. OK, now let's move on to pressure. Before we start looking at the effect of changing pressure, we need to be clear that pressure changes will affect molecules in the gas phase only. Solids and liquids cannot be compressed, only gases can. So pressure is a property of gases only. What happens when you decrease the volume of a cylinder that holds gas molecules, like this piston diagram? This will of course result in an increase in the pressure inside the cylinder. Essentially you're making the gas more concentrated, as you're squeezing the same number of moles into a slightly smaller space. Also, increasing the number of particles in the same volume increases the total pressure inside the reaction vessel. So keeping these ideas in mind, we will look at the effect of changing pressure on an equilibrium reaction involving gas molecules. Here is an equilibrium reaction that involves molecules in the gas phase. This reaction of sulphur dioxide producing sulphur trioxide is a key reaction in the industrial production of sulfuric acid, which is called the contact process. If the pressure on this reaction is increased, and this can be achieved by decreasing the volume, as we saw in the previous slide, then of course the equilibrium reaction will try to minimise the effect of this and try to reverse the pressure increase. This means that the equilibrium reaction wants to move in the direction that will decrease the pressure. So how can a reaction do this? It's quite easy. The equilibrium reaction will shift to the side that has the least moles of gas molecules, because less moles in the same volume means less pressure. In this reaction, there are three moles of gas molecules on the left, in other words, the reactants, and two moles of gas molecules on the right with the products. So a decrease in pressure inside the reaction vessel, the equilibrium reaction will shift to the side that has the least gas molecules, which in this case is the forward reaction. This will result in more sulphur trioxide being produced. The next change. Decreasing the pressure of a reaction vessel can be achieved by increasing the volume of it, so there will be the same number of gas molecules, but now in a bigger volume. Effectively, you have decreased the concentration of the gas molecules. Same number of molecules, bigger space. So, in order to minimise the effect and reverse this change, the equilibrium will shift in the direction that will produce more gas molecules, and therefore increase the pressure inside the vessel. In this reaction, this will be the back reaction, which has 3 moles of gas molecules as opposed to 2 moles of gas molecules in the products. So the back reaction will be favoured and more SO2 and O2 will be produced inside the reaction vessel and the concentration of SO3 will be decreased. Now let's look at something a bit more familiar. Most of you would have done this before. The dissolved carbon dioxide inside the sealed soda can is in this equilibrium. The dissolved aqueous carbon dioxide is in equilibrium with the gaseous carbon dioxide. When the can is sealed, there is a high pressure inside the can. When the can is open, there is a rapid decrease in pressure. The equilibrium will shift to the side of the reaction 
that results in an overall increase in pressure to reverse the effect of the change, which of course will be the side with the most number of gas molecules. In this reaction, this will be the product sign, as there is one mole of gas molecules in the products and zero moles of gas molecules on the reactants. So the equilibrium will shift to the right and the dissolved carbon dioxide changes into gaseous carbon dioxide and ta-da! You've got bubbles. Choice. Who would have thought there'd be so much chemistry involved in opening a can of Coke? So here is a summary slide of the effects of the changing of pressure on an equilibrium system. You should pause the video and copy these two outcomes onto your whisk sheet. Right, the last effect finally. This is the effect of using a catalyst on an equilibrium system. What we do know is that a catalyst speeds up the rate of a reaction. Therefore, using a catalyst with an equilibrium system will speed up the rate of both the forward and the back reactions equally. So using a catalyst will have no effect on the equilibrium concentrations of products and reactants. But using a catalyst will speed up the time taken to equilibrium and therefore ultimately save on the overall costs of an industrial process. But the catalyst has no effect on the equilibrium concentrations. So that's it. Here is a summary of the changes of temperature, pressure and catalyst on an equilibrium and reviews those key ideas. Now there are four more slides on this presentation. These four slides cover some examples of the equilibrium reactions and you should pause each one and read the slide carefully to see the range of ways that equilibrium reaction concepts can be expressed. Reviewing these will help you relate to equilibrium experiments in class and common exam questions that uses these examples. There is no narration for these slides, they are for your reading and review only. So pause the video on each slide and review the ideas that are covered there.